Hey, Peanut, come on. All right, Peanut's leaving. Uh, welcome back to the Driveway Engineer. I'm JR, that's Peanut. He's kind of being naughty. Today I'm gonna to show you guys uh, how to make, how I make fuel for my truck for 95 cents a gallon. So today I'm gonna to show you the actual process in a small scale way. I like to do things in a small scale test batch first. Um, and so I'm going to show you guys that process so you can get comfortable with it. And then later on in a few weeks, I'll show you the larger scale process that I do. So, uh, I'm at my cottage on the lake today and it's not a great day as you can see, but any day on the lake is better than no day on the lake. So, uh, let's go see what all it takes. All right, so here on the table is everything that you need to make a small batch or a large batch of actual biodiesel. And remember, vegetable oil is not biodiesel. Like I cannot dump this straight into my Ram because that, pre that uh, injection pump and those injectors won't tolerate the fat that's in here in the glycerin. Uh, I can dump this straight into my Toyota or into my Ford Power Stroke 7.3. Those are more tolerant, but the more modern stuff is not. Uh, I don't have a DPF or a urea injection or anything like that on that truck. And I wouldn't recommend doing that. But anyway, just to make this short and simple because I'm at my, you know, vacation house. Um, I don't want to filter... It's the same stuff that I pump, it's just from the store. So, vegetable oil, it can be any kind of vegetable oil, doesn't matter, but it can't be animal fat. Uh, heat, if you're familiar with this, this stuff is actually methanol. Um, it's not practical on a large scale. In a large scale, I buy 55 gallon drums, but on a small scale, this will do just fine. I have a measuring cup. I have a little baster to draw things off on the top. I have a spray bottle, you'll see that. I have various jars, I probably won't use them all. Um, I have potassium hydroxide, which is known as KOH. Um, used in liquid soap making, cleaning, blah, blah, blah. This causes a reaction with the vegetable oil along with the methanol that causes the fats to drop out of suspension. Um, and or, I'm gonna, what I'm going to make here is one liter of biodiesel, which is, uh, a quart so for me and my truck it's 24 miles to a gallon so that would be what six miles to a quart it's six miles worth of fuel um to get started what i need to do is measure out the methanol and the potassium hydroxide that i need and in order to make one liter i need 200 milliliters of methanol which my cup's marked and I need seven grams of potassium hydroxide. Oh, I have a digital scale here also. So I'm gonna get that all measured out. Actually, you guys can watch. I'll just, my camera, I, I dropped the cab from my cord on the camera, but uh, there we go. Waste not, want not. Uh, I'll set you guys up here and we'll do this as much as simply as possible. Now to do this in a large batch, you should do what they call a titration and figure out exactly what your ratio of free fatty acids is. Um, and when you're making 40 gallons at a time, I agree, you should. But for right now, just to get a grasp on how this stuff works, which is the goal for today, um, I'm not going to bother with that. And like always, there's multiple ways to skin a cat. And somebody will be like, that's not the way that I do it. Um, and that's fine. That's what makes the world go round. At six grams, seven grams. So 
we dump the potassium hydroxide directly into the methanol. Um, and we give it a stir. The reason for, for me to use potassium hydroxide, it'll dissolve the meth, it'll dissolve a little easier in the methanol than uh, lye will. Lye's a little cheaper and you use a little less of it. Um, so, you know, six one way, half dozen the other, kind of the way she goes in these things. This fork's not working. Alright, so I have the potassium hydroxide dissolved in the methanol. I'm going to pour it into this jar here. set a little lid on it because it's kind of quick to evaporate that's not the right lid for it but that's okay and then in this larger jar I'm gonna measure out the full uh, one quart of vegetable oil probably should have popped all these before I started the video but you know I am who I am All right, this is exactly one quart. I'm gonna take this inside. I'm gonna heat it up to about 150 degrees, which just makes the reaction a little easier. And then I will bring you guys back. So this is heated now, uh, which makes it a little, little runnier, a little more, a uh, little less vicious, viscous. Um, and we're ready to do our reaction here. So we'll throw our lid on, get it fairly tight, and then this needs to be, it takes about five minutes for the reaction to fully happen. You'll actually see it change colors. Um, it'll go like dark orange. There it goes. See how it changed colors? And that's why we heated it, to help it make that reaction. So I'll bring you guys back when I'm done shaking this for five minutes. All right, so you can see it's changed dark oil or dark orange from the pale yellow that it was. This needs to sit now for about 24 hours and what we'll see when we come back tomorrow is that all the glycerin in here has dropped to the bottom along with the methanol and the potassium hydroxide. So from there, we'll, we'll carry on from there. I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'm gonna go drink 10 beers and uh, sleep in a hammock. See ya. All right, it's the next day. So see all that that settled to the bottom? That is the free fatty acids. And now it's time to wash it. So the stuff at the bottom is glycerin and you can actually make soap out of it. Um, but we're gonna wash it and there's more sophisticated ways to do this than what I'm going to do. Again, if you go to like a full scale operation, you would have a mister or a bubbler. You can do this with air. You can do it a few different ways, but today we're just gonna spray water in it. So. I'm going to fill this up. I'll be right back. All right, so I'm just going to mist it with some water here. And what this is going to do is knock the rest of the methanol that's in suspension out of suspension. It'll sink down to the bottom. If 
you buy your water bottle from the dollar store like I did, you'll have a very hard time with it. Peanut. Peanut. Hey, peanut. Peanut. So if you look in there, you can see all the bad stuff falling to the bottom. Um, I'm gonna give this like another hour and then I'm gonna call it good. And we'll come back and siphon some of this stuff off and see what it looks like. And it's been an hour. You can see that little layer down there. This is glycerin, this is soap, this is diesel fuel. Uh, there's a few ways to handle it. The way that I'm gonna handle it is I'm going to siphon this off. Sweet, sweet fuel. And I'm gonna put it in my tank. If I had a funnel, I would actually just pour this in, but I don't have a funnel. So, spilled everywhere. Etc. Etc. So what I have here is a quarter gallon of biodiesel I can run my truck on. I'm going to set you guys up and just let you watch me pour all this so that you can see all this going into the truck over there.
All right, so it's a little windy at the lake today. Um, I am going to go down to the fish store and get some lunch, and you guys can come along with me. Now, I'll say up front, like obviously there's a huge dilution factor. I got a 24 gallon tank that's about half full. So I got 10 or 12 gallons of diesel in there, and then, you know, a quarter gallon of biodiesel. So it's not like earth shattering. But it's because it's small batch, small scale. So, but you're welcome to ride along and see if my stuff blows up. So I'll bring you guys back. All right, we're running down the road on our little biodiesel. Uh, I reset the mileage and I'll just bring you guys back after a little while and see if I'm on fire or if there's a million warning lights or whatever uh, we're gonna go get some fish you want some fish yes okay we're gonna get some fish from the fish fry we can rent a pontoon cool we'll bring you guys back all right it's been like 37 and a half miles uh, I'm gonna go into the O'Reilly's here and get an oil filter for the Toyota. But we haven't died yet or exploded. Are you guys dead or exploded? They're not dead or exploded. So, yeah, I mean, oh yeah, I'm hauling crap out of my cottage. But, uh, it's all good. I mean, you can make this stuff, if you scale it up, and you buy 55 gallon drums of methanol at once um potassium hydroxide the the other chemical i use isn't very expensive and you don't need much of it as you saw so i mean you can make this biodiesel it'll run in a modern truck with the dpf deleted for about a buck a gallon a little less uh i think i paid like 235 for a 55 gallon drum so hopefully you know that sets your mind going there's really no downsides to this. Uh, it's got a little bit more lubricity. If you have like a Ford or something that's a little sensitive to that, uh, it's actually a little better than regular diesel at lubing things up. So, that's the whole thing, I guess. I hope you guys enjoy. I thank you for watching. Let me know if you have any questions down below. And uh, we'll see you next time on Driveway Engineer.